In this segment, we're going to talk about adding form fields to PDF forms. In the topics to be covered, we're going to look at how Adobe Acrobat can add fields automatically to your form. Then we'll look at how to change field names so that we can get good field names that'll work with the database when the data is collected. Then we'll go to adding fields manually and finally, we're going to go through each different type of form field that's available in PDF and discuss how to configure, set up, and what they're best used for. In the last video segment, we showed how you can take a Word document and convert it over to be a PDF document inside of Adobe Acrobat. Once you've converted your document over, you'll want to see if you can let Adobe Acrobat auto identify where the fields need to be. To do that, you just go to tools, scroll down, prepare form, and just hit start. And when it does its conversion, it will go and try to find all the places where the fields need to be. And it'll also try to steal the captions to create field names. Now field names are very important on electronic forms. And this is because each field name will end up corresponding with a column in a database when you collect the data from the form. Because of this, we want to make sure that each field name is totally unique from any other field on the form. And we also want to make sure that the field name doesn't have any spaces or special characters in it. If we double click on a field, it'll pop up the text field properties. And the first thing in here is the field names. When I look at this field, I notice there's a space in there. Traditionally, we fill the space with an underscore. As an alternative, you could also come in and you could just remove the space between first and name. So the rule of thumb is one word without any strange characters in it. And strange characters kind of look like this. Or, if you're going to have multiple words and you want a separator, just put an underscore in. Next, we'll take a look at adding a field manually. When you go into the prepare form mode, it brings up this toolbar here at the top. And the toolbar is pretty self-explanatory. You can add a text field, checkbox, radio button, kind of a list box, a drop-down box, etc. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on the text box and move my mouse down onto the form somewhere and click. And when I do, it places a field on the form. Then I can go in and I can name the field. Maybe I want to name it first name. One thing I want to point out is that before I mentioned that fields need to have unique field names with the exception of radio buttons. But for now, if we look at the form, I just added a field called first name, and we already had a field on here called first name. And a way to quickly check and see if you have fields on your form that have the same names, you know, to go in and change them or correct them, is to look over here on the right. On the right, we have a list of all the fields on the form. If you see a little pound sign, with a number next to it, it tells you that you have more than one field of the same name. Now, you can go into the field and double click it to go into the properties, and you could change the name of the field right here. Or, if you like, you can actually click gently in here twice, and you could change the name of that field here, and then you hit enter. And now I have two fields that have unique names, Therefore, it complies with the rules. Once you have the fields down on your form, you can click on them with your mouse to move them around and to move them in place. You'll also notice that there's some little dots around the corner. If you grab the edge and click, you can drag and resize your field. If you grab the corner, it'll resize it in two dimensions. And this way, it'll resize up and down. Now, there's a couple of really cool tools in here that are going to make your life easier. And I'll show you how they work. If 
you right mouse click on a field, you'll see down here, you'll have alignment and field size. And let me best show you how to use these. If I were to drag my mouse and select these two fields, I could then go over the field whose height I want both of these fields to be, right mouse click, go to field size and select height. And what it just did is it shrank down this field to be the exact same height as this one. Now that it's the same height, I may want to make this field aligned with the bottom of the one next to it. So what I can do is I'll highlight both fields, which selects them. Then I'll keep my mouse over the field that's got the right level to it. And I'll go down to align and align bottom. And now these two fields just aligned to the bottom. So in two seconds there, I was able to get the field to be the right height and align the bottom of the other field. Then I can just grab the edge of the field, stretch it over a little and let go. And now my field is perfectly matched up and aligned with my other fields. Next, we're going to talk about the different field types, how to add them to your form, and little idiosyncrasies of each one to make it work the way you want. We will start with the text field. The text field is found up here on the prepare form toolbar. And I'm just going to manually drop a text field in here. And I'll give it a name. I'll call it text1. Now, if I go to the properties on the text field, we'll just kind of review the properties that you're most likely to use. You've got the name of the field, which you want to be one word with no spaces or special characters. You also have the ability to make the field required by checking this box here. And as far as the appearance of the form, you could, if you want, set an outline to be around the edges of the form. Uh, the only other thing you might want to do is go in and set the font size to auto. And this is important because if someone were to put in a long string of text into the field that went beyond the size of the box, what you would want would be for that field to squeeze the size of the fonts down. And I'll show you what I mean. So here's a field, and I'll just type in some gibberish in here. And you'll notice when I get past the edge of the field that I actually shrink the size of the font down so it still fits in the field to see. So if we go back to edit mode here, if we go back to the properties, it's always a good idea to set that font size to auto. And in the general properties, we set the field to be required. And for text fields, that's about all you want to set. For a multi-line text, we're basically starting with a regular text field, but we're going to make it so that people could put multiple lines of information into the box. Now, I could go back up here and select the field and add it manually, but I want to show you a trick, and this is a trick that's going to save you some time. If you hold down your control key and you drag a field, it actually makes a copy of it but it also copies the field name. So we want to go in there and make sure that field name is unique. So I'll make this text two. And uh, it copies all the properties. It actually copied this one and made it required. I'm just going to uncheck the required here. And over in the appearance, it's set to auto. And here's the thing that makes this. In the options, there is a little checkbox here for multi-line. And by checking that, it basically means that when your field has multiple lines of data typed into it, the data can accept hitting the enter key or the data can wrap and wrap and wrap around. And I'll go back to edit here. So just to review, Basically, a text field that has the multi-line 
box checked and the options makes it so the field data can wrap and also accept the enter key. Next, we'll create some radio buttons. So I'm going to go up and select a radio button. And I'm going to drop it on here. And when I do, it asks me for a radio button choice and a group name. So here's the scoop with radio buttons. When you have a group of radio buttons, only one radio button can be checked. If you checked one of the other ones, it unchecks some of them. So one choice with a radio button. So each one of these choices has to be individual. So on this radio button, I'll make it so if somebody checks this radio button, we pass the value of yes. And then I get to name the group of radio buttons. This is actually the field name for the group of radio buttons. Now, all radio buttons in a group have the exact same field name. So this is the only time we diverge from the concept of each field having its own unique name. Every field in a group has the same name. So I'm just going to call this um, R1 for radio group one and hit enter. Now they make it so that you can come down here and click add another button. So I can add a second button if I want. And maybe I want the choice on this one to be no. So basically, if somebody selects this radio button, it will be no that's passed. If somebody selects this radio button, yes will be passed. I'm going to go up and hit the preview button so I can show you what happens with the radio buttons. If I click this radio button, it selects it. If I click this radio button, it unselects that one and selects this one. So this would pass the value of yes. This would pass the value of no. And the name of the field, we called it R1. So in the field in the database, there would be a field called R1 and it would have the value of no. If I clicked here, it would be yes. Since we created the second radio button by adding an additional radio button when we put in the first, I just wanted to open up and show you the properties in here just to review. This radio button group has the exact same field name. This button is called R1 and this button is called R1. The only difference is that in the options, the first radio button has a radio button choice of yes, and the second radio button has a choice of no. And basically, this value is what is passed to the database when someone checks this box and hits submit. Unlike radio buttons, check boxes are their own fields. So I'm going to bring down a checkbox and I'll give this checkbox the name C5. And basically that will be the name of the field. And up in the options, we have something called an export value. And you can type in anything you want here as an export value so that if somebody checks C5, it'll pass to the database. Um, a field called C5 with a value of whatever you type in. For here, it's just saying yes. Now, if I were to go up here, and I put in another checkbox, and I'll call this one C6. I double click to go to the properties. This is a completely separate field from this one. It's not a group like radio buttons. And the export value of this is yes. So what I'm trying to get at here is, I'm gonna to go to the preview. This checkbox field is its own field. You can think of it almost like a text box field, except for when you check it, it transmits a specific value. If I were to check this field independently, they can both be checked or unchecked independently. You will typically see checkboxes used in a question that's phrased like this. Please check all the options that apply. Let's create a drop-down list. So I'm going to select a drop-down list and I'm going to resize the field a little bit. And it put a field name in of drop-down seven. That's fine for our example. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to options. Now, when you have 
a drop down box. You have something called a name value pair. They call it item and export value inside of a PDF. Basically, the item is what you can see in the drop down box. And a good example of this would be New York. And the export value is the value that's transmitted to the database. So I'll call that NY. And then I'll click Add. Now I can add in something else. I can add in um, North Carolina. Oops, fix my typo. And then I can make the export value NC because that's what I'd like to have in my database. So basically, you go in, you give a field name, and then in the options, you set the item and the export values for your list. And if we go up to preview, you can see we have North Carolina and we have New York. Now, oftentimes people will put a value in there to start the drop down box, something like select. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the properties and I'll put two little hyphens. I'll put the word select in there with two little hyphens. And I'll click add. And then you can move these up and down if you want. I'll click up, up to move it up. So now we have the word select in there. And whichever one is selected in this list, when you close it, becomes the default value that will be sitting inside of the drop down list. So I'll go to preview. Now we have select. And I can select New York or I can select North Carolina. Or I can just go back to select. Last but not least, we have the button. Now, some buttons can make something happen on the form, such as printing a PDF form. The way we're going to be using buttons is we're going to be using them to submit the form. Now, don't worry about any actions that will be taken when the submit button is pressed. We'll get into that later. Just wanted to show you that a button is a field like any other, and you can give it a field name. The only other thing I wanted to cover today is to let you know that if you have a field on your form that you'd like to be secret or hidden, maybe you have some data that you'd like to pass along to the database, but you won't, don't want a live field on the form, you can go, and I'll double click here in the text field, and inside where it says form field visible, you can set the form field to be hidden. And what that does is it makes it so that when someone is using the form, the field is not visible or editable. It hides it, essentially. So I'm going to go back and I'll change this back to visible again. When I go to preview, now the field is back. Hidden fields are great when you want to pass something like um, an ID number or a date time stamp or a counter or some other information that occurs when a form is submitted. So to recap, we took a look at how Adobe Acrobat can auto add fields to a PDF document for you to save time. Then we looked at changing field names to make sure that your forms, if you use them with other systems in the future, won't have any bad field names in them. Then we looked at how to manually add fields to forms using the forms toolbar. And finally, we went through each different type of field so that you could see how each field can be used and how each field should be configured. Now that you know how to build a basic PDF form, you may want to collect data back from that form into a database. You may also want that PDF form to work on all devices, like iPads and tablets. If you have any of these needs, please check out the services we offer at formrouter.com. That's formrouter.com.